Welcome back to our series called Ask Your Realtor. I was recently asked a question about earnest money and what it is, you know, where it goes and how it gets back to you. So let's dive into earnest money. So as a buyer, they have the most recognition of earnest money because when you start shopping for a home, once you write a contract, you need to put in that contract how much earnest money you're putting towards the contract. A good rule of thumb is maybe a percent. I reckon, recommend something around like three to $5,000 depending on the purchase price, um, but you can do less and you can do more. But what does earnest money do for you? Well, it eventually becomes part of your down payment. So it just doesn't disappear. You know, say you put $5,000 of earnest money down and you have a $20,000 down payment at closing on the closing disclosure, you're gonna see a line item for earnest money that's being included as a credit to you as a buyer. Earnest money is also a way that you show the seller that you're, you have skin in the game, you know, you have a commitment level. Um, because that earnest money, there are certain deadlines that once you pass, you may forfeit that earnest money to a seller. So, and it all depends on how the contract is written. Typically, our deadlines are due diligence deadline, where, you know, before due diligence deadline, you get an inspection, negotiate it if you need to. And then once you move past that, then there's the finance and appraisal deadline. So if your financing isn't in order, if the appraisal has an issue, you can cancel before that deadline and also get your earnest money refunded to you. Um, typically, if you pass those two deadlines then you're and you cancel after that, say right before closing, you're very likely gonna be forfeiting your earnest money and giving it to the seller. Depending on the market sometimes, or depending on the competition on a home, you may waive inspection. You may waive appraisal. You know, a cash buyer typically, they don't have financing, so they don't have a financing contingency. So. It is very specific, case by case, contract by contract, how different buyers are structuring a deal to get a property. But those are the general guidelines of how and where earnest money goes. The most important thing is to make sure to talk to your realtor, to make sure that you're, you're being aggressive as you need to be to get the home while still protecting your earnest money. And it's that agent's job to make sure that as those deadlines approach, they're having a conversation with you saying, hey, this is our deadline, we're about to pass it, are we okay to be done and move past due diligence? Are we comfortable where we're at? Because after due, dil due diligence, some of that earnest money may become non-refundable. For a seller, a seller is looking for the transaction to close. They don't wanna just collect earnest money from a failed transaction. They wanna sell their home. So it is what it is. Buyers and sellers are trying to commit to each other to make a deal happen. So there's obviously a lot of negotiation in there and just the earnest money is a way to add extra skin in the game for everyone to help get it done. If you have questions or wanna discuss this more, feel free to schedule a call with me at the link below. Thanks for joining me.